Hi folks, back at the Sansui 9090DB. Um, if you remember, the first thing we did, and the first thing you always do, is we repaired this unit because you don't want to take a risk of compounding any issues that the unit might have. Um, even the best of us make mistakes. There's a company out in the Pacific Northwest that specializes in Sansui's, and on their website, they say they do the restoration first. 80% of the time, it'll fix the problem. And indeed, in this case, it would have fixed it because we had a bad trimmer, and trimmers are replaced during a restoration process. However, I rarely see the same unit in a row um, usually I'll see something and maybe I'll see the same unit again months or even years later. So I don't subscribe to that for that reason. It works for this company because they specialize. In any event, now that we got it working, I went through and I finished the restoration of the F2624 board, tested the unit, and then I did the restoration of the power regulator board, which is the F2656 tested it again. The MO you always take is to restore one area or one board at a time and test the unit. And this way, if you introduce any troubles, you will know that they're isolated to that last section. So I'm going to show you uh, some schematics of the boards that I have so far done and show you the before picture of the board and the after picture and the schematic again outlined with what the parts of uh, the parts that were replaced Okay, so at this point, we've gotten to what I refer to as the low-hanging fruit. We got the driver board rebuilt, we got the regulator board rebuilt, we got the equalizer board rebuilt. And I refer to them as low-hanging fruit because it didn't take any major disassembly to get to these items. It was simply a matter of getting to the, um, <coughs> excuse me, taking the cover and the bottom off. Now, from this point forward, we're going to have to do some pretty serious disassembly. Uh, the front panel is going to have to come off. Fortunately, in this model, the tuner comes out as an entire assembly. Pull the front off, and we can lift this tray out to gain access. Uh, we're going to have to get down into the tone board. And most importantly, we're going to have to get to the Dolby board. Now, the Dolby board is going to take quite a bit of work depending on the version. There were two versions of this board, and it was one of Sansui's first forays into double-sided circuit boards. Uh, before that, and most of these other boards, excuse me, are all single-sided boards. So this 
Dolby board is a double-sided board, and the problem is uh, the feed-throughs from the top of the board to the bottom can be problematic and open up. Uh, if you saw the video on the Rivera amplifier I did, the problem with that is one of those pass-throughs from the top to the bottom of the board had opened up when I pulled the capacitor out because they did something that I don't approve of personally. They used one of the through holes to mount the capacitor. Those through holes that go from the top to the bottom should be standalone. But in any event, there's about 64 of them that may have to be pinned from top to bottom. But there was a later version of the board that addressed this, and those are riveted. And those are allegedly not problematic. We'll know more about what's going on when we get into this. So I'm going to pull the front off, and we're going to talk about that briefly, and take it from there. Okay, so in order to get the front panel off, we have to pull all the knobs. And of course, I have made a bag that has all the knobs in it. And also a separate bag for the hardware that came off. Because we have to take off a nut from here, here, and here. And then in the top, we have two small Phillips head screws that need to come out. And once those are out, the front panel comes off like this. And now we can get to what we need to get to inside. Now we're going to be pulling these off so we can get boards out that are connected to these pots. We're also going to be cleaning switches now that we have access to them. And we're going to pull the entire tuner assembly off so we can get, gain access from the top. So I'm going to do that and I'll talk you through the procedure there. All right, so there are eight screws that go around the perimeter of this tuner assembly here. One back here, one up here, one here, one down here, one over here, one back here, and one on each side of the lighting assembly in the front. And once you remove those, you can lift the assembly out of the way to gain access to everything underneath. Now, I don't want to unplug anything more than I have to, but uh, we're going to take a look at this and uh, this is probably a good time to also change out the main filter caps. So I'm going to stop the camera here and uh, let you know what our next step is going to be. Okay, so in order to move these caps, my plan is, and what I usually do, is I will cut the power feed wires and I'll remove as much solder as I can from the common tabs that tie the two capacitors together and go to ground. And then I will unbend those and pull this piece out. And then we should be able to get the caps out from the back now that we have access because the tuner assembly is, is loosened. Okay, so on the plan B, I wound up cutting these off and I have this small ratcheting screwdriver that's great for getting the tight places like this. Let me just go in here and break these screws loose in places you can't get a regular screwdriver. So this works out really well for this kind of work. I have a shorter bit I'm going to use to get down in there, but using this I'm able to get to the two out of three and then we'll have to go on to the bottom. The only problem with this is you have to be careful you don't knock the ratcheting uh, mechanism and it's so easy to do. But other than that, it's a good tool and I highly recommend you get one. Okay, so I've got the old capacitors out. You see them right here. And I bought replacements and the most important parameter for capacitors like these, since they're not going into a printed circuit board, lead spacing is not critical. Diameter is so that they actually fit in the old clamps. So what I bought were these. Much shorter, but they'll fit in the old clamps. And they don't have the solder lugs, and I'll show you how we're going to address that. But if you're gonna buy parts, invest in a digital caliper. I got this one for $20 at Harbor Freight and it's paid for itself many times over because I measured these before I bought replacements and they measure about 50 millimeters. 
So I bought replacements that were 50 millimeters and they should fit in the old clamps. There may be a little bit of difference, but these clamps should tighten down. So that's what you do. It doesn't matter if they're shorter. Shorter is fine. Longer could be problematic, but shorter is not an issue. Okay, so here's our old capacitor, and this is the bleeder resistor that was mounted across the terminals. Now, this has five terminals. One is simply a mounting terminal, and then we have two positives and two negatives. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount the bleeder resistor across one set of terminals, and the other set, we're gonna solder these ring terminals onto, like this, so we have something to attach our wires to. And this works very well. I'll show you the process I use to do that. But notice how much smaller the capacitors are. The first time I saw resistors like this, I thought they'd made a mistake in the order. These are 2 watt resistors. These were 2 watt resistors. Times have changed. And I wasn't sure if perhaps they used larger. Maybe these were 3 or 5 watt. Uh, at least 3. But I... Uh, I applied Ohm's law and determined that at 4,700 ohms or 4.7 K that we were fine with two watt resistors. In fact, it's only a little over one watt. So these should work fine for that. The purpose of these is after you turn the unit off, it bleeds the charge off the capacitors. So I'll show you what I do to mount these rings on the here. So I stick the rings down in this vise right here just so I don't burn the crap out of myself. And then I take some solder and I heat them up and just fill the ends. Okay, you see how it flowed down in there? The uh, vice sucks away some of the heat, but if you apply it, and it's important to always have a little wet solder on your iron to facilitate heat transfer. You'll know when it when it flows. You'll see it just drop in. And this is another reason I have the garage door open for ventilation. But there you go. So now what we can do is put them on our capacitor. Okay, so once we get the uh, the ends of these filled with solder, we can heat them up. And remember, always have a little solder on your iron to facilitate heat transfer. All right, so we've done that, and now we just sit it on here until it flows in. And bang! That's how we do that. Do the same thing with the other one, and then these two terminals here, I'm going to mount the um, bleeder resistor. So I'm going to do the rest of this off camera. You've seen once, you've seen it enough. Okay, so now we have our bleeder resist. Thank you, as I kick the camera or knock it. So we have our bleeder resistor mounted and we have our ring terminals mounted here. Now the only caveat is that we need to be careful when we solder the wires on here that we don't make it so hot that it detaches the lead from the capacitor or the ring terminal from the capacitor. Uh, but this has not been a problem to date. If you wrap the wires and then just apply enough heat to get the solder to flow, it does not unsolder this. I've done this enough times that I guess I've got a feel for it. Some of this is a feel thing. Um, by the way, I wanted to talk about screwdrivers. Since we were talking about different kinds of screwdrivers that are handy to have, I only learned recently, within the last few years, that Japanese Phillips head screwdrivers are not like American ones. And I'm going to put a graphic up here. Um, Japanese or JIS screwdrivers have a more blunt tip than the American Phillips do. Um, let's see here. The tip is more blunt, so you get more of the edge actually into the screw, and they don't, the term is cam out. They don't pop out of the screw. Now, most of the time, you can get by with a regular American Phillips, but those ones that are really tight, the JIS screwdriver will keep you from destroying the screw and having to drill it out or retap or do anything like that. I just wanted to bring that up while we're in here. 
Okay, so we have the clamps taken from the old capacitors and put on the new ones. Now, it's important that you get them snug, but not so tight that you can't turn it in the bracket because we're gonna have to put this in place and then rotate it until we have our rings oriented the way we want them. And then we can screw the bracket here like that. Okay, so Saturday morning, I'm back from my morning run and back at this 9090. We have the filter capacitor secured in place here. And I decided I'm going to replace this link that goes between the two capacitors with a piece of copper wire. Uh, I went to Home Depot and I had bought, probably a couple years ago, a piece of just bare copper wire. Now this was already cut and I think somebody um, didn't buy it. So they give you a good deal on it. And I keep a piece of this around for projects like this. But be aware that if you are going to use wire like this before soldering, take a piece of steel wool and buff it up until it's good and shiny. See the difference? Solder will not adhere well to this. Solder will adhere well to that. It's got to be clean and bright. Just like people welding say, you can't weld rust and you can't solder tarnish. Tarnish, excuse me. So, I'm going to replace this, replace the wire. I've got a roll of primary wire here. We'll cut a length of that. And then we're going to wire this up and then we will test it. Because every time we do something, we want to test, make sure we haven't introduced any problems. Uh, and I always fire it up on the dim bulb tester just to be safe if there's any issues. We want to make sure that we're going to limit the current and therefore limit the damage. I have double checked the polarity of these and I will check it one more time. Okay, so I've got everything wired up and I have a meter on each side, the positive and negative side, just to make sure that everything comes up and it is on the dim bulb tester so voltages will be low. So I'm going to fire it up. I will report on what the dim bulb is doing. And it is acting normally. And I just heard it pop out of protection. We have 37 and negative 37. So it looks like our filter cap installation is good. I'm going to turn it off and I'll test it off camera and make sure it passes clean audio and we will move on. Okay, so everything works, sounds fine. Um, I could have gotten by with smaller ring terminals, but th these are fine. There's no problem using these, nice and solid. Um, it's a shame, but getting drop-in replacements for this equipment is getting harder and harder all the time. So we have to improvise like this. Um, one of the things I wanna get into is 3d printing and cnc so i can fabricate parts because the day is coming where that's going to be our only option as it is now we have to buy a lot of parts off of ebay from units that are being parted out but that's a finite resource as well so going forward uh, fabrication of parts is going to be paramount so when you wire these capacitors up they have to lay out like this we have our positive terminal here Negative here, positive here, negative here. We tie these two together because this amplifier, like many, uses a bipolar positive negative supply. And you need to make sure when you wire this up, you get it right because electrolytic capacitors don't like having reverse voltages applied to them. And they will let you know by exploding or being ruined. These were not exceptionally expensive, but I didn't want to have to buy them again. So this is looking good here, and we're gonna move on. Um, I may do this small power supply here next and the tuner board. It doesn't really matter, it's all gotta get done. It's just a matter of what I uh, have all the parts for. I should have everything I need, but I'm sure I'm gonna have to place another mouse or order before this is all done. Okay, so I had a change of heart here. I decided that I am going to completely remove the tuning module from the rest of the receiver. And I wanted to do that simply because the vast majority of lamp work that I have to do is gonna be in here. Plus, I'm going to be replacing capacitors on this board and the uh, 
tuner regulator board here and I just want to I don't want to have to build a ship in a bottle if you will It'll just be a lot easier and uh, less prone at errors if I just take this completely off and nothing had to be unsoldered or cut this is completely modular it's just a matter of pulling some Molex connectors some pin connectors and the whole piece just comes right off so we're going to set this off to the side move this and you can see now all the work that we have so far completed i'm going to raise the camera up a little and uh, you can see our driver board our regulator board our equalizer board see our new filter caps so the work's going pretty well there's going to be a lot of work down here we've got to pull the dolby board out we've got to pull the tone boards out this dolby board is underneath here this function board is connected by these wire wrap connectors i mean these um ribbon connectors so we're gonna have to look at these some people have talked about replacing them i'm not sure we're gonna have to do that i do want a better look at the dolby board to see if it's the one that we're gonna have to do a 64 um, through board connections on if so it's doable but time consuming but this is what we uh this is what we get into when we get ourselves into this kind of work so i'm going to start working on the tuner module um, i need a relay for this i mistakenly thought it took the same relay as previous sansui's i worked on which all seem to take the same one this one uses a slightly different relay so there goes another mouser order and i want to see if there's anything else i need when i place that order so that's where we stand right now so i'm going to get this out of the way and then we're going to concentrate on the tuner module okay so we have the tuner assembly just sitting on the bench here by itself uh, I decided the uh, plan of action is to replace the capacitors on the tuner regulator board here and then do the tuner board recap. I need to check to see if there are any transistors on these boards that are on the uh, known bad actor list and replace those. And lastly, I'm going to replace all the lamps here. And now the owner specified he wanted to stay with incandescent lamps and that's fine with the uh, Sansui at least with this one um, but if he had a Marantz I would have tried to talk him out of it because the fuse lamps in the Marantz um, housings run so hot that they will actually melt the housing and it of course helps them to also get brittle with age uh, the heat just seems to speed up that process but it doesn't seem to be as much of a problem at least uh, this one looks fine so um, I got my lamps from a gentleman that goes by the um, handle of Dwojo. His name's Dave, last name, first four letters are W-O-J-O, -O, so he goes by Dwojo. And I'm going to put his email address up here because he is mine and many other people's go-to lamp guy. Um, he seems to have an almost encyclopedic knowledge of what lamps go where. And this is what he sent me for this unit. He's got everything here so I don't have to solder any wires he even gives you some solder in here and some heat shrink uh, he's a great vendor nice guy highly recommend him I'm going to put his email address up there anyone needs lamps don't think twice go to Dave all right so we're going to start with the regulator board here and I need to just look at the transistors you have to actually look at them you can't trust the schematics they often made pr production changes and they almost never uh, released any kind of um, updates. So you really have to you really have to look and see what you have and that goes double for when you're placing a parts order. Because I've, I've seen where people have placed parts orders from a service manual and then they get their parts and they go to work on it and they realize that there's drastic differences and they have to place yet another order. Um, we try to limit the number of orders we place because of the cost of shipping. So I want to do the recap on these because I do have to order a relay and I don't want to just order that item because that's a $15 item with $10 shipping and handling. I'd rather spend $100 and pay $10 shipping and handling get other things I need. So, we're going to start, we're going to recap this uh, tuner regulator board. Okay, so I've taken the first capacitor out of the board, and this is this 470 microfarad 16 volt. Um, I have some real nice low ESR 470 at 35 volt. 
and it is perfectly acceptable to go up in voltage rating. You can't go below the 16 volt, the 10 volt rating on this cap, but it's no problem to go up. But if you'll notice, the lead spacing is an issue because this is going into a printed circuit board and you don't want to just force this in because that puts an undue strain on the rubber seal around the legs of the capacitor here. And you don't want to do that. That can lead to premature failure of the cap. So what I do is I tend to bend them over like this and then make another bend like this. And now the lead spacing should be good. Now I just eyeballed it, but I got pretty good eyeballs. So when we seat this in, there won't be any undue strain on the rubber seal. Okay, so that's just something I wanted to bring up. Also, you'll notice if you look, the tuner board, let's get some light here. Tuner board has a lot of the orange jacketed electrolytics. Now, if you've watched my channel, I've already explained it, but uh, I just want to reiterate, these are low leakage electrolytics. Values 4.7 microfarad and under, I simply replace with film capacitors. If the values of these are higher than that, you can still get low leakage electrolytics, and that's what I use for that. Okay, so I've finished recapping the uh, tuner power supply board and the tuner board itself. Uh, I'm gonna hold off on doing the lamps. I'm pretty much done for the day here. Uh, but I did want to point out a few things. When you remove a capacitor from a printed circuit board, an electrolytic that's polarized, check the silk screen markings on the board, make sure they're correct. Most of the time they are, but not all of the time, and you can get yourself in trouble if you're not paying attention. So remove the cap, verify the silk screen, matches the polarity of the capacitor, put the new one in just like that. Exception to that is when you're replacing electrolytic with a film because films are non-polar. They will go in either way, no problem. Now, <clears throat> I replaced the low leakage caps on here, the orange jacketed ones, with film because film capacitors are inherently low leakage. Uh, people talk about using them in the signal path instead of electrolytics for lower distortion, and that is true. But in this case, I'm using them for the fact that they are inherently a low leakage device. Uh, the other thing I want to point out, this little, you know, they call them hacks, it's just a little uh, thing I figured out one day. They make things for putting your spool of solder in so you can just pull it like that. This is an old CD um, case, whatever you want to call them and it works fine for that. So I put that out here, I've been using that. It was free because I had it laying around and it works fine for this application. So I think we're gonna call this video. I'm gonna do the lamps in the next video and continue on with the rest of the restoration. Um, I haven't put this back in and tested it yet, but we're definitely gonna do that before we move any further. And I will report on the findings in the next video. So anyway, I'm gonna sign off now, get off my feet. And uh, as always, I thank everyone for watching, and I like ba giving back to the community that's given me so much. Thanks a lot, folks.